Thanks so much uh, for the introduction and um, thank you for inviting me to speak at uh, your booth uh, for Form Next 2022. So first, uh, just to give a bit of context, I'm a PhD researcher at the Institute for Computational Design and Construction at the University of Stuttgart. And I'll be presenting our various projects on um, hybrid additive fabrication since we bought the extruder about two to three years ago. So, um, most, uh, so I'm at the ICD and we are mostly architects and uh, designers who are interested in how uh, digital technologies can affect how we make physical things. And through our research, we investigate how computational design um, combined with digital fabrication processes can fundamentally expand the scope of what we can um, process, uh, create, and uh, produce. So very often we also incorporate biological inspirations in our, in our research because in nature um, form, material, and structure are uh, often intertwined very tightly. So basically we try to transfer these um, principles from uh, nature to design and construction using computational design and digital fabrication. So personally, I'm interested in how natural materials um, are often able to adapt to their surroundings by changing shape, often without using um, any energy at all, completely passively and autonomously. And what's amazing to me is that materials like the pine cone um, which is a dead tissue when it's disconnected from the living supply of the tree, uh, can open and close uh, autonomously, uh, very robustly, silently, and um, happening all over the world, and also um, even after like thousands of years. There, there are pine cones that are still working after uh, millions of years. Um, and so my research uh, mainly uh, delves into how to create 3D printed materials that behave like uh, natural and biological materials by controlling the 3D printing sequence in order to emulate these structures. And by depositing uh, multiple materials along specific trajectories uh, and, con uh, and creating this uh, intricate material structuring that you see on the screen, um, I 4D print material systems that perform this combined uh, function of sensing, actuation, and um, computing. And by the way, I print everything uh, flat, uh, which dramatically also increases the um, speed of production when compared to conventional 3D printing. So this uh, led initially to several explorations at the desktop scale. And um, I, uh, I mean, you can see here mechanisms that expand considerably um, in volume, uh, origami tessellations that simultaneously um, actuate all of their folds at once, and devices that self-shade by opening and closing. So, as an, uh, yeah, sorry, now, now the videos will play. <laughs> So as an architect, um, I was interested in whether or not these uh, functionalities that are able through, enabled through 4D printing uh, can be uh, transferred from the desktop scale to architecture and construction. And so then we moved into our large scale robotic construction laboratory. Uh, as you can see here, um, that's, our new, that's our hall uh, that we work in, in order to transition um, all of the research, the initial research, to uh, large scale using an industrial um, robot platform. So uh, we developed this hybrid additive fabrication system, which includes a high payload industrial KUKA robot uh, mounted on a 12 meter rail, and uh, also includes multiple uh, exchangeable tools on a um, shunk tool changer, and uh, we additively construct wood and thermoplastics in one system. So why, why wood? Uh, well, extrusion-based additive manufacturing is uh, notoriously known to be slow, a slow process of manufacturing. And wood is a very, very uh, well-known construction material, which is very good for, um, which is scalable and very good for uh, building uh, volume very quickly. And um, the fibrous structure of wood is also correlated with strength. 
Um, and as you probably know, it's also highly responsive if you've, if you've ever done any woodworking, uh, which combined with uh, wood's orthotropic uh, anisotropy is typically conceived to be a, uh, a negative thing uh, when working with wood as a material. But uh, in, in our research, when we layer the wood on top of each other, like a, um, in a bilayer structure like the pine cone, wood is able to generate quite high actuation forces, albeit with a low resolution of programmability. So for example, it can only be programmed to bend in one direction. Whereas, um, on the other hand, uh, 3D printed uh, materials or 3D printing allows a high resolution of detail in customizing physical properties, as we probably all know here at Formnext. And so, um, our additive, uh, hybrid additive fabrication process includes a vacuum gripper for the pick and placement of the wood actuators, as well as Seed's robot extruder. Um, for embedding those wood actuators in a uh, 3D printed metamaterial structure. So this results in a, basically a biocomposite structure that is capable of large-scale self-shaping. And uh, because we're transitioning everything from the desktop scale to the robotic scale, um, we have to adjust to a different um, you know, nozzle size. And as a result, also the uh, tool extrusion path had to be continuous and not crossing. So there's a lot of things that we can do at the small scale that we can't do at the large scale. So we had to redesign the algorithm for generating the tool paths. And by the way, we are also print we are also printing with um, UPM Formi, um, another material that uh, seed uh, supplies which uh, is a cellulose filled bioplastic similar to what I've been printing at the desktop scale. And um, also we had to adjust the 3D printing parameters um, that, I, that I had calibrated in my earlier work at the, at the desktop scale to um, this new system, which uh, we uh, did a thorough analysis to understand what the effects of the different patterns had on um, the loading capacity, um, the uh, compliance, and uh, with a par particular focus on the new self-weight of the system. And so this enabled the physical programming of areas with graded stretching, um, areas of high anisotropic stiffness, and also um, programming the bending in different directions. And so uh, these biocomposite structures are designed to transform from flat to curved uh, simply through uh, acclimating its moisture content it to ambient conditions. So just leaving it in indoor conditions for about a week, it's shaped into this, um, this form. And this is also the piece that you'll see um, on the, the chair in front. Um, so curvature is, uh, you know, it's not a uh, it's non-trivial to, to create, and this is a way to um, create complex geometries without uh, any um, mechanical uh, force. And um, the idea is that what, what I'm hoping is that self-forming architecture would then um, be uh, possible in our foreseeable future. And so, um, by the way, this uh, prototype that you see here was printed only in four hours, and it creates um, um, a, uh, you know, a, a lot of curvature. And uh, so it's quite fast compared to if you were to print it, print the curved shape from the start. And um, in this next project, I want to show some work that was done by my um, master uh, thesis students. And uh, this, is the, this is a program that we uh, run at the University of Stuttgart uh, called the iTech program, which is um, a master's program in integrative technologies. And my students, um, for their thesis, investigated uh, shell structures, how to, how to um, create self-forming shell structures. And so this was a, a larger, uh, larger piece that we created. And um, in order to create these shell structures, uh, they need to be able to deal with variations in double curvature. And also, um, with this approach, they, it needed to be printed flat. So um, you might know that it's, it's non-trivial to go from a flat shape um, with no curvature to something with uh, double curvature. 
Uh, like you, you see this if you bend, try to bend a piece of paper, for example, in two directions. So uh, it requires us to design the surface with local changes in the metric, or basically local changes in how much um, they stretch and compress. And um, we investigated uh, printing several different types of patterns, which are able to um, create positive and negative Gaussian curvature when, when bended uh, by the wood actuators. So uh, basically a saddle shape or like a dome shape type of curvature. And um, this, uh, so, so we basically printed a three meter long functionally graded surface that uh, transforms from flat uh, to doubly curved shell structure in one week. And uh, just some facts, uh, it's, it took about 13 hours to print uh, a, ge a, sh a geometry with a, lot of, with a lot of integrated functionality of the size um, of the dimensions three meter longs by uh, 1.5 meter uh, wide. And about the highest point of the depth was about uh, five um, centimeters. So besides self-shaping, um, we're also exploring how to utilize this timber and uh, 3D printed hybrid system uh, by uh, combining the the robotic timber assembly process with in situ or in process 3D printed joints uh, connections. And then uh, finishing and detailing uh, with a motor spindle to clean up any imprecisions that are left by the 3D printed uh, geometries. Um, so uh, in the end, so we, we um, presented this uh, methodology for a workshop that we held about last uh, a year ago. For, for Acadia, and um, we had the students, uh, the participants of the workshop investigate bespoke form fit timber joints, um, exploring how the interior and isotropy of the 3D printed joints could aid in the transfer of um, the, the loads from the timber uh, pieces. And uh, we also explored um, how this could be utilized in a bigger system for, um, for architecture, for example, for a slab structure. And um, yeah, so this hybrid additive uh, fabrication system, I think, opens up the design space for new um, types of solutions that are not only um, self-shaping, but also, um, you know, thinking about uh, designing large-scale building components that have a programmed compliance. And this is something that we probably don't think about in our in our buildings, typically, because the way we build is usually with rigid elements, but um, this could open a new type of um, uh, uh, building system or structure, or maybe even an architectural experience. So uh, finally, I want to show one last project, which um, is uh, Girls' Day. And uh, this is an initiative that happens in Germany once a year, and it's targeted at high school girls who are, who are looking to find a career path. And um, we've been hosting this workshop for the past uh, two years now, and last year uh, it was also very kindly supported by SEED. And um, basically, uh, in order to transfer the research that I've been doing into maybe practice or um, you know, industry even, we have to change the way uh, that we currently 3D print, which is you know, considering objects as a um, uh, kind of the bound boundary, but not really thinking about the interior of the, of the geometry. So um, in this workshop with uh, girls from uh, my uh, seventh to seventh to 10th grade, um, we basically introduced them to the idea of parametric design and materially and fabrication formed uh, design. So thinking about how, what kind of objects they want to design, how this would be um, in a model like sliced, and how we think about the, um, the printing process or the fabrication process using an industrial robot. Uh, platform and um, allow them to engage with uh, you know digital design in a playful way by having them um, all make chairs, uh, furniture skill objects. So we challenge them to uh, think about how they would design a chair that's completely bespoke and customized for themselves or their um, their friends. 
and um, and uh, what kind of possibilities could arise from that? What kind of new features can be created from this uh, from from thinking about design this way? So um, we uh, created a um, a plugin for them to be able to adapt, for example, the dimensions uh, to to them to themselves, and then to uh, also create features on each side of the chair. Um, just for example, creating like a little um, uh, depression for them to sit comfortably on the chair or also use utilizing the curvature to actually create structure and stiffness in their um, in their uh, objects that they're designing so um, in the end we had um, you know a, a very interesting um, uh, results of, of all of what they imagined and how they perceived um, you know their chairs to be and uh, it was, uh, yeah, really very uh, popular um, uh, workshop that we also got very good feedback on. And so we're happy to uh, continue this um, with seed support uh, also uh, next year. And um, also another point is that when kids come <laughs> into our lab, they also really love um, the, the, the objects, uh, babies especially. So on that note, I just wanted to um, maybe end with something personal. Um, the research that I do, I, I hope it just it doesn't necessarily stay in sort of an esoteric research realm. But um, personally, for me, I take um, you know a lot of the work I do even into my personal life, <laughs> and so all the sort of uh, like we do a lot of test printing, and they they never go to waste. So um, I mean, these are just some fun um, objects that I incorporated into even my personal. Um, in my, in my, uh, so the, the desk is 3D printed and the bed is also the base of the bed, the shelves. So as you can see, like uh, my house, I think one day will be completely filled with 3D printed furniture. <laughs> um, so yeah, with that, I will um, conclude uh, my talk. And I don't know if uh, anyone has, if we're doing discussions uh, or questions right now, but if not, uh, I'm also around, and you can just approach me and ask questions. Thanks.